Hey, praise the Lord. Greetings, everybody. My name is Clinton. To those of you who are in Christ Jesus, you know me as Brother Clinton. And this is the Word Prophet Channel, a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth, as our Lord Jesus Christ commanded. It is written in John 4:24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And that's why I'm here. And I hope that's why you're here too. Praise the Lord. I am a Christian. As a Christian, I am a minister of Jesus Christ. And that means that I am a minister of the truth. But I'd like to speak to you for a couple of minutes about some lies. And the reason that I want to speak to you about some lies is to make manifest the truth. I know that might seem kind of confusing for the moment, but in a couple of minutes it'll make sense, I assure you, if you have ears to hear the word of God. So what I'd like to speak to you about in particular are two lies that Trinitarians tell when they baptize people. Now what is a Trinitarian? A Trinitarian is a person who believes in three different gods. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, I know that Trinitarians will take exception to the fact that I just said that they believe in three different gods, but they do because they believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They believe that these three persons are all distinct one from another, but that they are all equally God. So if you have three persons that are all distinct one from another, which means that this one isn't this one, and this one isn't this one, and this one isn't this one, they're all distinct one from another, but they're all equally God, then that's three gods. And there is no intelligent way to dispute that. That's the fact. If you believe in three distinct persons that are all equally God, then you believe in three gods. And so that's what a Trinitarian believes. He believes in three different gods. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so when Trinitarians baptize people because they're not Christians and they don't know the truth, they don't know Jesus Christ, they tell lies. And these are two of the lies that they tell people. Number one, they tell people when they're about to baptize them that baptism doesn't save you. They say that it's a, an outward showing of an inward change, which isn't written in the Bible anywhere. Or they say that it's a public profession of your faith, which also isn't written in the Bible anywhere. Or, or they'll tell you that it's an act of obedience after salvation, which also isn't written in the Bible anywhere. Some of them will tell you that it's an ordinance in the church, which is also not written in the Bible anywhere. So they tell you that baptism doesn't save you, but that's the exact opposite of what the Bible teaches, because the Bible says in the New Testament that baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is for the remission of sins, and that it saves us. That it is how our sins are washed away. Paul, the Apostle of Christ, who preached the Gospel of Christ, which he learned from Jesus Christ, became a Christian by being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. It was Ananias who was sent to him to lay hands on him that he might be healed from the blindness that he was experiencing for those three days and receive the Holy Ghost. And Ananias said to him, And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And Peter, when he began to preach the gospel of the New Testament, the way of salvation of the New Testament, from the day that the New Testament began on the day of Pentecost, began to preach, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Not because of the remission of sins, for the remission of sins. In other words, that's how your sins are remitted. By the blood of Jesus Christ, when you obey his commandment to be baptized in his name. It's really just that simple. But Trinitarians will tell you that baptism doesn't save you. And that's a lie, according to the Bible, because the Bible says that baptism does save us. The Bible says in Titus chapter 3, verse 5, that God saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, being born of water and of the Spirit, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Peter said that just like in the days of, of Noah, when Noah and his family were saved by the waters, that, that, that baptism doth also now save us, the like figure unto which baptism doth also now save us. Baptism saves us. The Bible says this over and over. Jesus said, even before the New Testament began, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. 
So the Bible says over and over and over that baptism in the New Testament, since the day that the New Testament began, baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is for the remission of our sins and that it saves us. It's the washing of regeneration. It's how our sins are washed away. But a Trinitarian will tell you that baptism doesn't save you and that it's just an ordinance or an outward showing of an inward change or all one of the many other lies and gobbledygook that they tell people. So that's the first lie that a Trinitarian will tell you when he's going to baptize you. The second lie that he will tell you, and this is kind of subtle, so please pay attention. The second lie that he'll tell you is when he has you in the water, he'll say unto you, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Or many times he'll say Holy Spirit. Same thing, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, two different words that mean the same thing. So he'll say unto you when he has you in the water, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then he'll just dunk you under the water and pull you out without saying any name. That's the second lie. Did you catch that? Jesus said, and it's written in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 and 19, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So, Ten days after that, the New Testament began, and his disciples, his apostles, whom he had chosen, began to preach, repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Why did they preach, repent, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? The answer is because that's what Jesus told them to preach. Where did Jesus tell them to preach that? Well, it's written for us in the end of the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. What is the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost? Well, the name of the Son of God is Jesus, right? I think we can all agree on that. The name of the Son of God is Jesus. So where did Jesus, the Son of God, get his name? Well, according to the scripture, he got his name by inheritance from his Father. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 4 says that he obtained a more excellent name than the angels by inheritance. And Jesus said unto the Pharisees in John 5:43, I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. And he said in the 17th chapter of John when he was praying, I have manifested thy name unto these which thou hast given me. Jesus, the Son of God, is called Jesus because that's his Father's name. Jesus is a name that means Jehovah the Savior. In Hebrew, it's Yeshua. Okay? It's not Yahshua, and it's not Yahushua. It's Yeshua. Yeshua. That's how you say the name of Jesus in Hebrew. And Yeshua is a compilation of the name Yehovah and the word Yasha, which means Savior or having salvation. So Jesus is Jehovah the Savior. The name of Jesus is his father's name. The reason that the Son of God is called Jesus is because that's his father's name. And it just makes sense that any son would be called by his father's name. His name wasn't given to him by his stepfather or his mother. His name was given to him by God, who sent an angel to tell Joseph and Mary what the name of the child was going to be. His name is Jesus because that's his father's name. And his father is the Holy Ghost. The Bible says... In Matthew chapter 1, verse 20, when Joseph was thinking about putting away his wife because she was pregnant and he hadn't known her yet, the Bible says, Fear not, Joseph, to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Now, I know that this doesn't compute if you believe in a trinity of gods. And that's because there is no such thing as a trinity of gods. And if you believe in a trinity of gods, then you can't read the scripture as it's written. Because Jesus Christ isn't part of a trinity of gods. He is the Son of God. He is the Son of God. His Father is the Holy Ghost. When he, after he had received the Holy Ghost, what did he call the Holy Ghost that was in him? He called him the Father. Time after time after time. So you see, there is no trinity. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ. That's the name that Jesus was referring to when he said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And you might say unto me, well, Brother Clinton, why didn't Jesus just say in my name? Because, my friend, the word of God is a stumbling block, a stumbling stone to them that are disobedient. It is designed, it is ordained of God. His word is ordained to cause those that are disobedient to stumble at his word. It's written in 2 Peter. Let's just go there real quick. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. No, I'm sorry. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, starting with verse 6. Wherefore it is also, pardon me, wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is that chief cornerstone. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense. And when he says offense here, he's not talking about people that are offended by you know, they, they feel bad about something that was said to them. To offend means to stumble and fall. Okay? To offend also means to say something to hurt someone's feelings, but that's not the, the, the meaning of the word offend in this context. The meaning of the word offense in this context is someone stumbling. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, the word of God, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. You see, the Word of God isn't like a dictionary. It isn't like an encyclopedia. It isn't like any other book in this world. It's given to us by the Spirit of God, by inspiration of God. And it is a two-edged sword. And so to those of us who believe on our Lord Jesus Christ, He is precious, and we believe His Word, we receive His Word, and we walk in His Word because we're born of His Word. We have His Word abiding in us. But to those who have not his word abiding in them, his word is to them a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, a rock that causes them to stumble and fall. You see, because they're into theology. They don't believe the word of God. They're into theology, precept upon precept, line upon line, that they might go and fall backward and, and be broken and snared and taken, as it's written in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 13. So you see, people that believe in a trinity of gods, they don't know God. They don't have God's word abiding in them. And, they, and so they can't read the scripture as it's written. So they don't understand that the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ. And that's why Jesus said what he said, and he caused Matthew to write it down exactly that way. It wasn't changed later on by someone who was a Trinitarian, like some people try to say. The Word of God is what it is. This is my Holy Bible, King James Version. If you, if you speak English, this is the Word of God. It hasn't been fooled around with. It hasn't been tampered with. It hasn't been mistranslated. It says what it says because that's what God said. And God said by the mouth of His Son, Jesus Christ, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That's what he said, and that's what he meant. And his apostles understood what he meant. And ten days later, when the New Testament began, they began to preach exactly what he commanded them to preach. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And the reason that God caused it to be written down that way in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, is so that those who are disobedient would stumble at it and not understand it. This is the reason that Jesus spoke in parables when he came to his people Israel, that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not hear. That's why he said many times, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. So a Trinitarian, when he baptizes people, will tell those people two lies. He'll tell them, first of all, baptism doesn't save you. That's a lie. And then he'll tell them, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then he just dunks them under the water and doesn't baptize them in any name. That's another lie. That's two lies. And those two lies are very pernicious because if you believe those lies, then you're going to wind up in hell because you haven't obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
You don't believe the gospel of Jesus Christ if you believe those two lies. So if you were baptized that way in time past, then now God has sent his word to you this very moment, whether it's morning, noon, or nighttime where you are, whatever time of day it is, God has sent his word to you just now through this vessel to let you know that you have been lied to. And so if you desire the truth, if you desire the kingdom of God, if you have the word of God in you and you're, and you're saying to yourself right now, wow, I've read the Bible and that brother's right. He's speaking exactly what the word of God says. Well, yes, I am speaking exactly what the word of God says. And so if you were lied to and if you were baptized with a false counterfeit baptism that can't save anybody and you desire to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ and be saved from your sins and not only obey his gospel and be saved, but continue to serve him so that you can be saved in the future from the coming wrath, then you're in the right place. God has sent you to this ministry or sent this ministry to you, whatever the case may be. And I'm here to serve you in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you care to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, I should say if you desire to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, if you haven't been already, then my email address is right there, right down below in the information box. And you can send me an email and introduce yourself and tell me what city you're in, and I'll be happy to put you in contact with a man of God that, that I know of who is near you, who can meet with you and fellowship with you and baptize you in the name of the Lord, and so that you can become a Christian and fellowship with the saints and be made ready by the Word of God and the fellowship of saints to stand before Jesus Christ on the last day and enter into his kingdom. And so that you can hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Instead of hearing him say, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And that's exactly what he's going to say to people that believe in three gods and lie to people when they baptize them. So, the choice is yours. Truth or error, life or death, heaven or hell. I'm here to serve you in the gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord. My name is Clinton. Put me to work.